What if I were to tell you that there is a gouging rod out there that did not require compressed air? Well, there is. And it's made by Rock Mount Research and Alloys. Let me show you that rod. So my new friends over at Rock Mount sent me over some of this Electra AAA arc gouging rod. So this is to be run on DCEN, and today we're gonna put it head to head with traditional carbon out gouging rods. And we're gonna see which one outperforms the other. I have a sneaking suspicion that the traditional carbon out gouging rods are gonna be a little bit better, but without having to use compressed air, this could be a very handy tool in any metal repair guy's toolbox. Now, if you thought your boy was just gonna gouge apart a couple of plates and fucking call it good, you're wrong. We're gonna do a real world field test of this gouging rod. And let me show you what we're gouging today. So my friend Sean owns Christensen Rental here in the town that I live in now. And he has this old Gale excavator, this cutting edge. So now this is where I'm gonna do the majority of my testing. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna gouge half of this with carbon arc. I'm gonna gouge the other half with the Electra AAA. I am extremely excited to test this product out and I'm gonna tell you why. If you've watched my videos in the past where I don't have this rig with the air compressor and I'm in my black truck, this could be a game changer for me. I'm really sick of trying to gouge with a torch. I'm not the best at it, and that's my problem. Those scarfing tips, they're just kind of hard to control. It's not like carbon arc gouging. Carbon arc gouging, you have way more control than anything I've ever used, but I've never used these electro rods. And in fact, I'd never heard of them before until I went on the Arc Junkies podcast with Jason. Jason filled me in with them and actually made the connection between me and Rock Mount. The other thing we're gonna be doing today from Rock Mount is we're gonna be going ahead and using one of their tartan rods to weld this back together. But enough of me yammering on, let's fucking jump into this. All right, so we're gonna follow the instructions on the Electra AAA box. We need to run this DCEN, so I'll just swap my polarity around real quick. We have the eighth inch rods, meaning we're gonna be running at 225 amps. And as you can see, you kind of have to use these in a unique way a 15 to 20 degree push angle. All right, so let's set our machine up here. Let's throw her on electrode negative. Let's start her up for the rest of the settings. At 225 amps. I'm not say anything about ding, but I'm just gonna put it over to stiff just in case. So here's the new cutting edge Sean brought out for me. This is what we're going to be welding back on. Here is what the gouging rod looks like. To me, it just looks like an eighth inch 6010, uh, but clearly it's a lot more special than that. So let's go ahead and give this thing a whirl, see how she blows out some metal. So this is my first attempt at using it. As you can see right there in the middle, we got a good gouge, but right there I deposited metal rather than taking it out. Now, this is my very first attempt at using this rod. So don't judge it too harshly just yet. Let me get this technique down and let's see how well it works. There in the middle, it was working pretty fucking good until I slowed my technique down. And um, I think we'll, be a, we'll do a good job at pushing this stuff out. Well, this is Sean. He's a friend of mine. He owns Christensen Rental and he's got a lot of broken stuff all the time. So he's the perfect guy to test this rod out. Sean, what do you think? Do you think this is going to be a good, do you think this be a good product for maybe when I'm not around, maybe something that you could cut yeah, stuff apart? If it works like we say it does, it'll be a good product for you. All right, let's check it out. Well, you use the hard facing products now. Yeah, yeah, I do on my uh, wire feed. Yeah, okay. So, Sean's familiar with Rock Mount.
I think I'm, I think I'm getting it down a little bit better. What do you think? Uh, it looks like it was working pretty good there. I feel like if I aimed it down more into the cutting edge, I could probably get a better cut out of it. We'll do about half the blade with this, and if it works out good, then maybe we'll do the crack too. But if not, we got the arrow art gouge to compare it to. Yeah, that'd be a good Yeah. videos on it and uh, for me I think that's the way to do it is to scoop and kind of push it. And it's like, uh, for me that might be the thicker. Yeah. All right, so let's get you an up close to the final product. So this is after I worked on my technique a little bit. This is what I first started with. But as you can see, once you got the technique down, this really is an incredible product. So what do you think about it, Sean? Would you buy some of this if you needed it? Nice. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna blow out to up to here with that gouging rod. But I'm gonna do the rest with the carbon arc and we're gonna do a comparison. By this point, I've gotten the technique pretty well down. You gotta move it in kind of a hacksaw motion and just really quickly whip it in and out, in and out, in and out, and almost scoop and push the metal. It's really, really interesting the way you have to use this thing, but once you get a hang of it, it really makes sense.
The other thing I really like is the ease of slag removal. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it just blasted right off right when I dragged my wire wheel across the first time. Keep in mind guys, I did not practice before I did this. This is my first time ever using that rod because I'm stupid and I don't care. Cause I'm fucking stupid. I don't give a fuck. No, not that I don't care. Of course I'm gonna give a good product, but I figured I could figure it out. If I can carbon art gouge, why couldn't I use this, I figured. And I was right. If you can carbon art gouge, you can damn sure use this rod here. But now let's switch over to the carbon art gouge and let's see how that goes. Okay, we're gonna be comparing it to Matheson's 532nd carbon arc uh, gouging rod. And the reason I'm using the 532nd is because it has a comparable amperage range to the eighth inch electro rod from Rock Mount. So let's put this fucker head to head, see who wins. With carbon art gouging, you can run it in DCEP, DCEN, and AC. I'm gonna switch my machine over to DCEP because that's how I'm used to using my carbon art rods and I wanna keep it in a similar atmosphere. We might switch it over to DCEN just to see what it does. One immediate apparent disadvantage to the carbon arc rod is I have to run two machines at once. Well, I do. If you have a uh, air pack machine, it's only one, but that's more fuel I'm consuming. So that's one disadvantage right off rip to the carbon arc. Another disadvantage to the carbon arc is that when I laid the rod on the ground, I snapped it right in half. That's why you can see there's only half of a rod in there. They're very delicate, very easy to break. And if you know me, well, I'm not gentle on things. So that's kind of a disadvantage for me. Okay, so you can see the carbon art gouging is almost identical. I'm not the best at this, okay? I'm pretty decent. I don't do it all the time. But you can see I got a pretty nice profile there. Let me catch myself up with this and get a little bit more in tune with it, and then we'll see what it looks like at the end. This seems a little bit deeper penetrating to me, but maybe we could crank the amps up on the electro rod and give it another go and see what it does. right there that's the carbon arc we got some carbon deposits here that's my fault uh, I just I fucked up there wasn't enough air in the machine and I tried to run it but you see the carbon arc looks pretty good I think honestly it's less user-friendly than the gouging the electro rod so I'm not gonna be able to gouge this because it's a carbon deposit I'm gonna try to gouge it the electro rod and see how that does
they butt welded the cutting edge to the uh, mud bar or whatever the hell you call that. All of the cutting edges I've ever removed have been welded over the mud board and not butt welded to it. There we go. You can see it's all one piece there. I even ground it out just to make sure after I cut the edge off. And you can see we got a nice clean gouge away from the base metal here. And right here, I just kept going and going. But you can see our separation line right there. That's where our, separa our separation line turned out. So uh, to save money and time, I'm gonna go ahead and break the torch out and just cut this the rest of the way off. You might find my torch technique a little sporadic here. And the reason being is because I'm just trying to melt away the cutting edge and not the base metal. I don't want to cut into the base metal at all because when I put the new cutting edge, it's going to create gaps for me, making it take more time. So it turns out that the dirt behind the cutting edge from it being so far wore down was actually making it a lot harder to cut. This thing is just chock full of dirt. All right, so right there, you can plainly see our separation. So obviously they did butt weld the blade to the mud board. Um, I will try to beat this down with a sledgehammer, try to straighten that all out before I continue. But first I gotta eat. This is taking way longer than it should have. So I'm gonna go eat something, then I'm gonna come back to this. I'm all back from lunch here. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this cutting edge up for him. Twenty minutes later. That's basically 80-10. All right, so I have the whole root burned in all the way down. It looks pretty good. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use Sean's MIG over there as Miller-Matic just to finish this out because this is taking too goddamn long. So I'm using the Miller-Matic 252. I'm running at about 23 volts and I'm using hard wire with 75-25 shielding gas. It's 045 wire. It's burning in pretty nice, but honestly, I could have used uh, one size bigger wire for this one.
it looks like I'm using a drag angle from this camera angle, but I promise I'm not. I have the gun turned and it is a push angle. So the reason you see me using a needle scaler on gas shielded mid is to create some expansion uh, so that I lower the likelihood of a crack along this blade considering the blade is hard on So that is done. I don't think I'm going to get to the crack today. That was a pain in the ass. It turned into more of a pain in the ass than I thought it was going to be. It's all right. Not a big deal. Let me show you the final product. Came out pretty good. I'm not mad at that at all. And of course we welded it all the way around. And then I teamed it with the needle scaler just to uh, give it a little expansion. We put a root of that tartan B in. And that Tartan B has an 80,000 pound PSI. It ran exactly like a 6010, so I'm gonna assume it's basically an 8010. Um, ran perfect. So we got that, it's all knocked out. I hope you guys enjoyed this today. If you didn't, you can go fuck yourself. If you're in the market for an airless gouging rod, please check out Rock Mount's Electra AAA rod. That thing is bad fucking ass for what it is. Um, I did not expect it to work as well as it did, but it did, it worked great. All right guys, uh, like, subscribe, share. I'll see you on the next video, all right?